In today's video I'm going to review this thing. It's an infrared camera. This was sent to me and I cost by per year. They contacted me and said, hey, do you want to review this? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? Looks like it should be good. Let's get into it. So as you can see, it's quite a nice box. It's a good fit. Top packaging here, bottom packaging. So look at the bottom packaging first, get rid of that. So I did show this briefly in the mail bag previously. So we've got a little cleaning cloth thing here. A little booklet, got a little carry bag, we've got a USB C extension cable, quality certificate checked by number 45 apparently. And so it's, it's the infrared night vision go, I think is the one or another, it's actually cool. It uses the Go app on Android, and that's the Chinese side. This is the English side. So a night vision go is the app you gotta find. I've had this thing with me for a few weeks now, and the app is a bit limited in some of the features it has. I mean it's it's a basic app, it works mostly. But there's some things which I wished it had. I've actually put those requests through and I did get told that they will be working on that. But those don't appear to be ready yet. So hopefully in the near future the app will be updated to the features which I'm going to discuss later on. So this is a 256 by 192 resolution. 12 micrometer pixel size. Spectral range 8 to 14 micrometers. Frame rate 25 hertz which is surprising. Thermographic range minus 20 to plus 150 degrees C which is great for doing electronic stuff, that's all you really need. Accuracy, plus or minus 2 degrees C, or plus or minus 2% of reading, the larger value shall prevail. You might as well just say plus or minus 2 degrees. And it's USB-C type connection. So this thing's actually surprisingly small. This is it. So it's a tiny little infrared camera. Single lens. I've still got the camera on it, I'm going to leave it on for the time being. And you just plug that into the port of a USB compatible device. Like it has to be an Android device. There's a certain Android version it has to be from. I can't remember what it is. It has to have a USB C at the very least. Okay, so you can plug this in. I've got my tablet sitting off to the side here, so we'll plug this in, and we shall have a look at it. And we'll discuss the things I found, which I think are good or bad. Well, yeah, we'll find out. But I'll use this in a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you just go to the Google Play Store. You look for Infiray. Now there's lots of different Infiray apps, you have to make sure you get the correct one. And the one I actually need for this, or the one you'll need too if you're doing this, is the Night Vision Go app. Right, so this is the one I've installed. And I've actually put, given some feedback on what I think it is needing. Okay, so I actually have this app installed down here. Right, so I need to plug the camera in. So let's do that. Let's plug the camera in. I'm going to face it towards me. For the time being, there's its boot screen, which is a bit slow and a bit annoying to be honest. Having to wait for this every time. Anyway, there we go. You can see me. Hello. Hands cold. <laughs> Apparently, my hands cold. Nothing, I've still got that plastic film on there too yet. You can see it's working, it's doing its thing just fine. Now in orientation with the camera facing towards you on this particular tablet it's the right way up and this is one of the problems we've been having. See this? It just crashed. The app like I said is basic it has a few problems. Crashing is one of those problems and if you basically unplug it, plug it back in again it will resume and carry on. Crashing seems to be random, I haven't been able to determine exactly what causes it, it just randomly crashes. I don't know why. See, just unplug it, plug it back in again, and off we go again. I don't know why it crashes. Depending on the device, and the point, depending on how they've actually constructed the device, the camera orientation can be a problem. Like right now, it can see me, and that's not much use. Usually you want to look at something that's the other side of the device. As you can see here, it's showing me just fine. Resolution looks alright. No problems at all. And it's giving you the temperatures and stuff like that. And it's crashed again. Which is fine because I unplug the camera anyway. What lets this thing down appears to be the software. Let's so plug the camera in the other way around so that we can see the desk. I'll actually stand up a bit as well. Probably get some reflections. You still see me in it. Assuming by the startup screen being annoying. And there's a the desk. Oh no, it's already crashed again. <laughs> See, it's nothing there. It's not showing up at all. I 
Yeah, see this gets kind of tedious. This is part of the feedback I've given them, is that the, the smash screen's annoying, the camera orientation's a, a bit of a problem. There we go, we have it working now. Now, the problem is, let's try and stand up more, is that if you look at the orientation, you notice something funny here? It's upside down. Now, it actually tracks the orientation of the tablet, so if I rotate the tablet around, it actually tracks that, that's fine. Right, so I'll turn it up the other way, it's to, it rotates with it, but it's still upside down. <laughs> so in this case, I can't actually get the image the right way up, it's just not possible. It's always upside down, because if you rotate the tablet around, it doesn't make a difference. You know, turn it around like this. Oh, it's crashed again. <laughs> oh look, the splash screen again. The camera itself is really good. The software is what lets this thing down. There we go. See, this orientation is still upside down. And there's no way of rotating this. You can't actually do it. So you can actually go to some settings here. You see it's rotation. But it's not actually rotation, it's flipping. You can flip it left and right. Okay, that could be handy, but what actually needs is rotation. You need to flip it upside down as well. Left and right and upside down. And if you could do upside down and left and right, then you could potentially effectively flip it over for the configuration you need. So this is limited. Right? I can flip it left and right, but that doesn't actually help. <laughs> it's still upside down. Left and right side would be correct, but it will be upside down. So that's why it needs rotation. So yeah, the settings are quite limited in that way. And this is something I've, I've requested. You know? Anyway, it's got temperature, degree of C, Fahrenheit, Kelvin. Um, measurement correction, you can do that. That's the like you what the values are right now. Emissivity. There was a trouble pronouncing that. Emissivity, that one. <laughs> and you got some options here for that too. So it's got some nice bits in there. You know, image optimization. Don't actually know what it does. And then when you come back out of there, you're back on the camera. And it is upside down. See my thumb is facing downwards. It's rotated. So if I flip it my hand will be coming from the correct side, but it will still be upside down. Yeah, that's my pet peeve. But otherwise, you know, I think the app is what lets this thing down. Otherwise, it seems fine. The actual camera is really impressive. So if I pull it back out, I mean, your device might be fine with the rotation. It depends on how the device has been constructed. You know, in this case, obviously, this device has been constructed with the, the board the other way around. If you've got a device where the camera facing the other way is fine, that's not an issue. So the way to resolve this is actually quite simple. I'm going on about this quite a bit, but it's, it's simple when the app's not crashing at least. Is you can use this cable here, like right? this extension cable, which also gives you a bit of flexibility, I suppose, about moving things around. Um, if you use this cable, you can then rotate the, ca the camera into correct orientation. Oh look, it's crashed again. I was actually wanting to delay doing this review until the new app came out, so that I could actually show you the latest version of the app as part of the review. And hopefully these kinds of freeze issues have been fixed. I was being asked to do it sooner, not wait for the app, so it's like, okay. And I can now rotate the camera independent of the screen and get it the correct way up. With it facing the other way, like I said before, it's upside down. Now my hand can be the correct way up. But it's about having this camera orientated opposite way to the socket, see there's opposite directions. So normally it would be that way around, which means it's upside down. So this is the solution, is to use a camera cable like this, and it's crashed again. The camera's really good. App needs some work. So next thing I want to do is demonstrate using this for electronics. I don't actually know if this is going to even show up. This is a 240 volt powered device that's powered up. It's not actually powered up now, but now it will be. I don't actually know if anything's even going to show up for heating or anything like that, but we'll give it a go. I'm looking for anything heating up. I'm hoping something does show up so we can actually see it. I'm trying to basically trying to show resolution if I can. It's crashed again. I 
So what I'm hoping to do is capture the fact that you can see the LEDs. Can you see the LED? You can just see it there. That dark spot. Coming on off, see it? Heating, cooling, heating, cooling. Just see it coming up. So you can actually register the LED flashing. I'm hoping to see something else, but there's nothing really showing up on this board. Those little dots of things that were reflective, and it's just crashed again. Focal range is really good, you can get really close to things and see. If you can keep the app running, all the better for you. I'm going to change settings again. So, what I should try doing is turning off image optimization. I'll try turning it off in case that was affecting it. If I can change it back on again, come on. Oh, for God's sake. I can't review this with the app, it works like this. When the app comes out again, hopefully it gets better. But right now, it's just pointless me trying to show you this thing working. Seriously. Thanks a lot for the camera. I really appreciate the support in that way. Poor Gear sent me the camera, but I think they've got some kind of affiliation thing there with Infinity or some relationship somehow anyway. So I really appreciate them sending me the gear to do the review with, but wait for a new app version, something. Does it have an app version in here? Oh, come on. Just open the damn thing. About. Okay, so here's the information about the app. Version 6.2.9. Doesn't work very well with this camera. So maybe when a new version comes out, maybe 6.3 or something comes out, maybe it'll be fine. I mean, the camera looks really good. Right? The actual camera output, the quality looks excellent. And as you saw, the refresh rate and the update rate, everything looks really good as well. That looks really nice. It's got selectable color ranges and things like that, and you know, display types. It's all selectable, but right now, the app crashing is a big deal. I don't know. Would you buy one? Maybe. You know, maybe once the app's updated and it actually works properly, then it's worth buying one. But right now, I wouldn't recommend it. Which is a shame, because I'd like to recommend it. But I'm not going to say go and buy one of these and you're going to have the same issue I've been having with this. Because that's just not fair on you. When the app works properly, great. So maybe look out for the app and look out for the user reviews. And when you get reviews that say it doesn't crash anymore, maybe you'll be alright. Catch you later.